What's up? This is Alex with SideQuest Games here bringing you an achievement guide on the Lone Wolf achievement. This is essentially Halo Wars 2's lasso achievement. So we are going to boot up that second mission there. As you can see, I've got all the schools on and we are playing on Legendary. Now, if you need to still get all the schools, simply check out the link in the description below. I have a complete guide for all the collectibles in the Halo Wars 2 campaign. Now, the reason you're going to want to choose this mission is because the game is going to give you as much help as possible. And so from the very start of the game, all your units are going to start losing health due to one of the skulls. But as your units die, the game is going to keep reinforcing you. So that's always going to be nice. Now, I would recommend just progressing through the mission. Don't do all the bonus objectives until after you've set up your base, just so this way you have enough units to take the base. And then just being tactical with when you're using your heals. And now for this challenge, it's going to be not too difficult because the enemy units are going to suffer from the same decay that your units are suffering from. As you can see here, taking on the base, eventually if it takes you long enough to destroy that base, you're going to get some hornets that are going to fly in and help you out. And then just be aware that every time you destroy a base, there is going to be a wraith that will spawn due to a skull. And so once that is destroyed, you're going to set up your fire base. Now you're going to want to maximize your infantry production here. So I would recommend having the majority of your build pads be supply pads and then the rest for your power can be compensated by taking Atriox's power nodes. Once you've got your base set up and you got a pretty decent force built up you're gonna want to move to the bottom of the map and take that second base. Don't worry about losing your warthogs because you are gonna be continually reinforced every time a warthog dies they're gonna fly in another one to replace it and then again just watching out for that wraith. Once you've done that you're gonna want to upgrade your base to allow you to build more supply pads and essentially train more units. And then once you've got a pretty decent force and you're starting to build up your bases, you are gonna just wanna take those bonus objectives to get you as many points as possible. Here I am just scouting out the enemy base area. Now, what I would recommend since your units are gonna die so quickly and be at this constant state of decay is to set a global waypoint somewhere around the enemy base or near the enemy base. And then the main strategy here is just going to be training units indefinitely and as many as you can, as often as you can, so that you will always have a steady flow and stream of fresh troops. Once you're ready to invade, simply heal your battle group there. And then as soon as they're all healed, you're gonna wanna send them into the enemy base to take out Decimus's main base. Taking on enemies shouldn't be too bad. Like I said, they are suffering from the same decay that you are. And so their health is all gonna be in the red, just like your units. And then moving up your rally point, so that way your constant flow of troops is coming as close as possible to that base to support your units. Jerome's got a ton of health, so don't worry about him too much. Again, keeping an eye out for that wraith that's gonna spawn. And then word to the wise, there is a skull that causes a Massive explosion on top of a hero death. I kind of forgot about it here, as you can see, but feel free to use that to your tactical advantage. Keeping that near Decimus or that Wraith would have easily at least done some serious damage. And then just simply attacking him with your massive horde of infantry. I found that moving my infantry back a little bit and getting near these garrisons and then garrisoning my infantry was giving them not only a distance advantage on their range, but also tactically just kind of helped take him out. And then once you've destroyed him, you're going to go to that score screen. As you can see here, my skull bonus is negative 100k, but accumulatively with my time bonus, combat bonus, and objective score, I did get past 100,000, which is the requirement for a gold medal. So I believe when it says to reach a gold medal in the achievement description, it is talking about reaching that many points worth because as you can see there i clearly did not get a gold medal but still got the achievement hope this guide was able to help you out please let me know in the comments and leaving a like and feel free to subscribe this is alex with side quest games mm -hmm.